Sworn in as the 13th President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on May 29, 2007, Umaru Musa Yaradua could barely complete three years in office before death came knocking on the door. In this video, we explain the history of the sickness and death of Nigeria's most loved and respected leader, Yaradua. We will touch on the path hustle that followed his sickness and eventual death on the 5th of May 2010. We will also touch on who was Umaru Musa Yaradua before he became the president of Nigeria. Please stay with me. Welcome to His Media In-Depth History Umaru Musa Yaradua took the oath of office and allegiance on the 29th day of May 2007 in a ceremony that was well attended by dignitaries in Abuja. His constitutionally prescribed tenure of four years was to end on May 29, 2011. However, according to the constitution, Yaradua was entitled to another term of four years after the expiration of the first. Barely three years into his first term, death came knocking on his door and eventually snatched him from his family and the entire country. He died in the evening of Wednesday the 5th of May 2010. Like most Nigerian leaders, President Yaradua's health status had been shrouded in secrecy. However, on the 6th of March 2007, while Yaradua was the governor of Katsina State and the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, rumors went around that he had collapsed and died of kidney failure. While it was true that Yaradua had collapsed, it was not true that he had died. His office quickly dismissed speculations of ill health and attributed the challenge to stress. In October 2008, it was reported that Yaradua was suffering from terminal lung cancer and chalk straws, a rare disorder marked by blood vessel inflammation. Though there was no official confirmation of the claim, it would be partly validated when President Umaru Musa Yaradua traveled to Jeddah in Saudi Arabia for treatment. On November 26, 2009, his health status was reportedly confirmed. It was reported that Yaradua has been battling acute pericarditis, an inflammation of the membrane around the heart, since November last year, for which he received treatment at the King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. For weeks, the president has been incommunicado and have not been heard from or seen in public. But on January 12, 2010, President Yaradua makes his first public statement after several weeks. In a radio interview, he assured Nigerians that he was recovering and hoped to return to the country soon. During this period of general uncertainty regarding the health of the president, even his vice president Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan was allegedly denied access to his Ellen boss. It has also been alleged that Jonathan only saw his boss on his deathbed. A very serious but unfortunate power tussle ensued. In a ruling on January 22, 2010, the Supreme Court of Nigeria ordered the Federal Executive Council to within 14 days decide in a resolution whether Yaradua was incapable of discharging the functions of his office. The ruling also stated that the Federal Executive Council should hear testimony of five medical doctors one of whom should be his personal physician. On the 10th of February 2010, the Senate used the doctrine of necessity to transfer presidential power to the Vice President, Good Lord Jonathan, and declare him acting president with all the accompanying powers until Yaradua returned to full health. This move was considered by many as controversial. On February 24, 2010, President Yaradua was flown back to Nigeria in great secrecy and with a military lockdown. His state of health was unclear, but there were speculations that he was on a life support machine. Three months later, on the 5th of May 2010, the unexpected happened. President Umaru Musa Yaradua had died in Abuja. Before his death, religious clerics had visited him to pray for his quick recovery. On April 1, 2010, four Islamic clerics, chief imam of the Abuja National Mosque, Ustaz Musa Muhammad, 
leader of the Izala Muslim sect in Katsina State, Sheikh Yakubu Musa, Sheikh Isa Pantami, and the president of the Supreme Council of Sharia in Nigeria, Sheikh Ibrahim Dati Ahmed, visited the president to offer prayers for him. The Christian community was not left out either. On April 5, 2010, the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan President Most Reverend John Onayekan, Presiding Bishop of Living Faith Church, Bishop David Oyedepo, Reverend Emmanuel Kure, and former Asurok chaplain Professor Yusuf Obaje arrived at Asurok Villa at about 4.30 p.m. to pray for President Yaradua's recovery. But these prayers were all to no avail, I will say. Yaradua was buried in his hometown in Katsina on May 6, 2010, according to Islamic tradition. It was established that Yaradua was a chain smoker and the pressure of the presidency was believed to have worsened his underlying kidney problems. Then, the power tussle ensued. Now, if you are enjoying our informative stories, please leave a like on this video, subscribe to Hispul Media and drop a comment as well. Thank you. The last six months of his life saw a paralysis in government activities as a power struggle developed between the family of Yaradua, their northern supporters, and those around his vice president, Goodluck Jonathan, who wanted him declared as acting president and then Yaradua's successor as provided by the constitution. Another existential crisis was brewing and the possibility of another military coup was high. At that time, the reputation of electoral democracy in the country was very low and there were Muslim Christian clashes in North Central State of Jos. There were senior officers in the Kanu-based cabal who were critical of political failures and the sense of drift in the country's leadership. Another justified fear among Northern elite was that if Jonathan could come to power, it would be difficult to get rid of him because of the benefits and power of incumbency. The rotational principle of power sharing in which the PDP was supposedly wedded was another underlying concern for the northern elites. Under this principle, power was supposed to return to the north for an equivalent period of eight years after Obasanjo's eight-year tenure. However, civil society groups swung behind adherence to the constitution and was strongly opposed to the manipulation of Tura Yaradua, the wife of the Elin president. Jonathan gradually won support as acting president in the occult polities of Abuja. In part, he was seen as a guarantee that an amnesty deal in the Niger Delta, one of the key achievements in Yaradua's period of health, would not be shattered. When Yaradua finally died, President Jonathan declared a seven-day mourning period and said, Nigeria had lost the jewel on its crown, and even the heavens mourn with our nation tonight. As individuals and as a nation, we prayed for the recovery of Mr. President, but we take solace in the fact that the Almighty is the giver and taker of life. Not long after the general confusion arising from the president's death and the power play that followed, President Jonathan began campaigning to win his own mandate in 2011. Rather like the crisis over Obasanjo's attempt for a third term, this turned out to be a victory for Nigeria's battered constitution. While some officers may have been tempted to take over power, there was a recognition that the country and the world had moved on since the Abacha era of the 1990s. Through a combination of amnesty and financial inducement, the Yaradua era saw a serious attempt to deal with militancy in the Niger Delta and restore peace in the oil-rich region. Yaradua's second major initiative was to clean up the banking sector in the aftermath of the global financial crisis. His appointment of Sanusi Lamido Sanusi as the governor of the central bank in June 2009 was key. Sanusi was a tough central banker who dealt firmly with five of Nigeria's biggest banks. He bailed them out and subsequently fired their chief executives. But much of what most of us know about Yaradua is during his time as the president of Nigeria. So, before becoming the president of Nigeria, who was Umaru Musa Yaradua? 
Yaradua was born to an elite Fulani family and his birthplace was an important center of Islamic learning. His family was prominent in both traditional and modern polities. His father served as a federal minister during the First Republic from 1960 to 1966. His late elder brother, Shehu Musa Yaradua, served as second in command in the military government of General Lushin Gunu Basinjo from 1976 to 1979. Yaradua started his elementary education at Rafuka Primary School in 1958. In 1962, he moved to Dotsima Boarding Primary School. Thereafter, he attended the government college at Kefi from 1965 until 1969. In 1971, he received a higher school certificate from Barewa College in Zaria. Yaradua received university education at Amado Bello University in Zaria, where he obtained a bachelor's degree in education and chemistry and then returned in 1978 to pursue a master's degree in analytical chemistry. From 1975 to 1983, he taught in various colleges and the polytechnic before becoming a businessman and served in the management cadre. He also served as a director of many companies. In 1975, Yaradua got married to his better half, Turai Yaradua. The marriage produced seven children, five daughters, and two sons. Yaradua's first entry into party politics was as a mobilizer for the now defunct People's Redemption Party. During the long transition program of General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida between 1989 and 1993 to restore democracy in Nigeria, he became a founding member of the People's Front, a political association led by his elder brother which eventually became the core of the now defunct Social Democratic Party, the SDP. His interest would turn to state politics from 1991 when he stood as a candidate in the Kasina state gubernatorial election. This was, however, not a successful outing. Yaradua was defeated by the candidate of the NRC, Seidu Bata, in an election that held on the 14th of December, 1991. Seven years later, Yaradua was a founding member of the K-34 Political Association, which later merged with the People's Democratic Party in 1998. Again, Yaradua ran for governor in 1999. This time, it was a successful outing. He won the election in 1999 and re-election in 2003. As Katsina state governor, Yaradua was adjudged by many as the best governor in Nigeria at the time. His administration focused on the socio-economic development of his state with particular attention to the educational and health sectors and was known for being financially prudent. Not only did Yaradua pay off the huge debt that he had inherited from his predecessors, he was the only governor who left savings in the state treasury, amounting to about $50 million. No doubt, the death of Umaru Musa Yaradua was a critical blow to the developmental aspiration of Nigeria, as Nigerians still consider him the best president Nigeria ever had. Click this video here to know how every Nigerian president died and their last words. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Hispul Media. Remember to on the bell notification so you don't miss any of our future uploads. And I will see you in our next video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.